Alright, so I'm going to be doing a skills guide for my Magic 6 now. So basically I'm going to be covering all of the skills uh, that you can obtain in my Magic 6. Uh, and I'm just going to be talking about the, all of the weapons and armor skills. And I'm just going to be talking them in the context of skills since it's that's way better to me than just doing like a weapons guide which is a lot of the weapons in this game are very RNG based so it's not really much point in talking about getting weapons that you may potentially n not ever get so we're just gonna be talking about the skills and whether or not getting the, the weapons are any good or not. I'm also going to be talking about these skills uh, under the assumption that you are not playing with the unpatched that you are playing with the unpatched version as opposed to the gray face patch which uh, has a very large effect particularly on weapons and their recovery rate because in the unpatched version, the recovery rate is added together between two weapons. So it's a lot slower, making it basically useless. Uh, the gray phase patch uh, changes that to make dual wielding more viable, so uh, keep that in mind. So starting off, we have staff. Uh, which every class can learn. It's druid start with the skill. You can learn it at Blade's End. You can get expert staff in New Serpigal or Mist and Master in Silver Cove. Every skill point gives a bonus to attack. Expert staff gives a bonus to armor class. And Master gives a chance to stun per skill point. Stabs are basically worthless. Uh, they're the worst weapons in the game, aside from maybe clubs. Although you don't have to uh, learn club. Basically, one of the main problems with staff is that, first of all, really high recovery, base at 100. That shit is really slow. Uh, recovery rate is very important. It's far better to have a lower recovery rate, which gives you more hits, which in turn c can make you do uh, twice as much or three times as much damage simply because you're hitting more than whatever damage bonuses you're getting. On top of that, there's no damage bonus to stabs at all for skill points and the stabs in the game are almost all of them are completely uh, underwhelming in terms of damage now I know some people might look at the armor class bonus and say oh well what about getting a C bonus dude it's not worth it to put pump staff skill for armor class period if you want to pump armor class y you have light magic putting one point in light magic is going to give you automatically one point in armor class because when you cast our power it, it casts stone skin which is going to give you one per point in light if plus you cast Day of the Gods which is boosting your speed that's uh, every few levels that's going to give you a bonus to speed uh, to AC on top of that you have you, uh, you can get Guinevere which gives bonus to light uh, magic plus an item that gives bonus to light magic which is going to stack together Meaning that you're going to be getting at least 2 AC per skill point, possibly close to 3. So, 
if you want to pump AC, you probably should just go all in on light magic, especially this is in addition to all of the other stat bonuses that you're getting, like with damage, hit chance, luck. Uh, and if you don't have light magic, you can still pump earth magic, which is, again, it has stone skin, which every skill point uh, that you put in earth is going to give you one armor class. And if you have Morgan, the, the artifact that boosts uh, earth magic or, or elemental magic, plus an, an item that gives a bonus to uh, earth magic, you're getting at least two AC per skill point. And if you still want more AC after that, you can pump skill in armor, which automatically is giving you one skill point per level. So if the whole point of getting staff is for the AC, you're, you're, uh, you're getting the exact same from any armor skill. Or you can even pump shield, which is giving you three per skill point. There's really no point in getting staff at all. The only argument that I can think of for maybe getting staff is there's Merlin, which is an artifact staff that gives 40 spell points. So say you have like a skip bell casting party and you're not really using melee on spellcasters at all, then you could make an argument for, for maybe that staff being pretty good because really the weapon doesn't really matter. It's just something that you can give a bonus to your stats. Then since 40 is a little bit better than most of the items that I think the usually they cap out in like mid 20s or so in terms of spell point bonus but even then like the chances of you getting Merlin unless you save scum is pretty low uh, you're basically banking on a specific RNG uh, drop and the bonus uh, just for one specific uh, item which really isn't all that good to begin with uh, especially at the point that you're probably gonna get it so staves are basically worthless I would put them at RP tier don't bother with them unless you're role-playing Up next we have sword, another weapon skill. Uh, clerics, sorcerers, and druids cannot use it. Knights and paladins start with this skill automatically. You can learn sword at blade's end. You can get expert sword in castle iron fist and free haven and master sword at Blackshire after you do the Cavalier promotion. Uh, every point in sword gives a bonus to attack at expert. It reduces, every point reduces recovery rate and master allows you to use a sword in your left hand. Now, like I said, I'm going to be talking about these weapons as they are in the unpatched version. So in the original vanilla game, the recovery rate of dual wielding items is stacked together. So if you have a sword which is a 90 base recovery, and you stack that with a spear which is 80, the recovery is not going to be 90, it's going to be 170, which basically makes all dual wielding weapons completely worthless because it's so slow it's not worth it. 
so in the uh, unpatched game, you're basically just wanting to one hand this uh, weapon, maybe get a shield, but swords by themselves aren't very good. And the damage isn't going to be great. Uh, there isn't any bonus to uh, attack or damage which really hurts the, the damage output for sword. Every point in sword that you put, uh, you're not getting any damage bonus in it, which there are skills like mace and spear that gi give you that are giving you damage per level. So let's say you have 10 points in sword. You have to get first of uh first of all the sword is is considerably slower. It's 90 recovery. So at 10 points in sword, you're hitting as fast as a spear and mace, but you lose uh, 10 damage uh, from skill points that the spear and mace would be getting. Uh, and when you, the more points you put in sword, then the the more damage that you're losing compared to other items. So the sword is kind of garbage. Uh, you're going to have a hard time getting the recovery low enough and you really don't want to be pumping uh, a skill that's... Because once, that's, once you get the minimum recovery, then all you're getting is attack hit chance f from the skill points that's it compared to uh, all the damage that you're getting from putting the same in spear or mace so I'm really not a fan of him um, in the gray face patch um, obviously dual wielding is a lot better uh, you can wield a sword and spear and be do pretty fine once you get a good light magic. Uh, I would not recommend getting beyond master, but I'd still put sword at C tier uh, simply because of the basically you're required to just go one handed and the damage isn't going to be good. There's like one decent sword I guess. Hades. A relic that gives plus 20 poison but again not particularly good uh, as far as particular swords that you want I, I would uh, recommend getting a sword of darkness uh, which is greatly going to reduce the recovery rate which is going to make it go down to minimum recovery as soon as possible which at least you know you can hit it pretty fast although those uh, darkness enchantments unless you save scum are going to be hard to come by so if you have a find one of darkness it's obviously good because of the high or, or a swift one even it's going to be doing uh, a good amount of damage but uh, I would definitely put other weapons far above it so it's C tier up next we have the dagger which can be learned by every class except for clerics sorcerers start with the dagger skill It can be learned in Buccaneer's Lair, Protection Services, and the Smuggler's Guild. You can learn Expert at Castle Iron Fist or Freehaven, and Master at White Cap. Every skill point in Dagger gives a bonus to hit chance. At Expert, you can use Daggers in your left hand. And Master, there is a chance to do triple damage equal to point in skill keep in mind this is only the base damage so the buffs that you're getting from heroism that's not going to be tripled together now 
once again, like I said, dual wielding in 6 is pretty worthless because 120 recovery is still way too much. With that being said, uh, if you're doing single hand, uh, daggers are really good in that they require almost no uh, setup to get to the absolute fastest recovery for a melee weapon. So you wield a dagger, you have 25 speed which you can get in the character creation screen, and you put on haste and you already have the minimum recovery. Being able to hit uh, as fast as possible is far better than any individual damage because the more hits that you get then the more damage that's going to be cumulatively be dishing out so compare that to a sword for instance if you have one point in sword compared to one point in dagger you get haste and 25 speed you're going to be at 60 recovery with a sword compared to a dagger so that means that the dagger is hitting twice as fast so you're getting basically two more hit uh, one more hit so basically the damage is doubled compared to the sword so uh, the damage for dagger is going to be the best in the early even mid game because especially if you're wearing armor it's gonna really lower your recovery rate um, you can eventually get uh, lower recovery for some of the lower for mid tier uh, uh, recovery uh, weapons but dagger is going to end up being the fastest weapon that you can use for quite some time so it's obviously the a very good um, weapon to use uh, even for your main melee characters because it's going to be dishing out uh, a lot of damage early on uh, based uh, totally on uh, it being uh, so fast and there's a particular dagger that you can get fairly early on Mordred which is vampiric vampiric is very nice uh, bonus because it heals your character and since healing is very lackluster in sixth that's really nice uh, definitely uh, I would go for dagger early on get pretty good dagger and you're gonna be even for your uh, melee characters um, until uh, eventually uh, if for the fighters you can make uh, there's a pretty strong case for stat, uh, spear being better but just for the sheer utility of damage output that you can get very easy I'm gonna put daggers at A tier alright next we have axe Axe can be learned, cannot be learned by clerics, sorcerers, or druids. And you can learn it at Blade's End. You can get Expert Axe in Castle Iron Fist and Mire of the Damned. And you get Master Axe when you complete the Snurgles quest, but only after you complete it, which is in Mire of the Damned. Uh, 
Every skill point you put in Axe gives a bonus to attack. At Expert, it reduces the recovery rate. At Master, it reduces the damage. Axes are pretty garbage. I'm not a fan of them. They're way too slow. Uh, the slowest in the game, tied with Staves at 100 recovery base. You can lower it at per skill point and compared to the sword that actually does give a bonus to attack or to damage so you can get a uh, pretty decent damage from an axe although I don't think that the axes in six are all particularly good I think that the spears are still superior in terms of damage Uh, the the artifacts are kind of a joke. Chronos it basically gives 100 HP, which is kind of nice, but not really that important. Stuff like Vampiric is going to be way better. I think there might be an another one, but I, I don't think so. Um, one of the main problems is just that it's just way too slow. It just takes so much investment. First of all, you have to get the you have to do the Snurgle's quest, which you can't really rush early on. Uh, some of the you have to go through two dungeons, and the dwarves can do a fair amount of damage. Plus, you just need to put so much points into axe for it to be any good. And Spear is going to do a similar damage output and be a lot faster, a lot quicker. So I think axes are pretty garbage. Uh, I would definitely recommend looking for an axe of darkness because, or swiftness because that's greatly going to reduce the recovery rate and make hitting a lot better. But I would not recommend Axe primarily f as a weapon. Uh, if you find a swift Axe, then maybe you know you can get it low enough to where it, it hits pretty well. But there are just better options, so I put it at C tier. Same as Sword. Up next we have Spear which can be learned by uh, every class except for clerics, sorcerers, and druids. You can learn it at Blade's End. You can get Expert at Mist and Silver Cove and Master at Mire of the Damned after completing the Cavalier promotion. Uh, every skill point gives a bonus to attack. At Expert it gives a bonus to armor class and Master gives a bonus to damage. I like uh, Spears. I think they're in terms of damage the best weapons that you can use in the game especially in the unpatched version the best option is to just go for a two-hander which you actually get a small bonus for wearing uh, for having it two-handed it has an 80 recovery so it's gonna be slower early on if you get a spear of darkness or swiftness then it's going to immediately be as fast as daggers. Uh, if if you don't find one, or if you eventually want to get uh, a spear that gives bonuses to damage, then you can eventually get light magic decent enough. There's actually one tactic that's kind of cheesy, but you can totally do it is to just use New World Computing's um, stat boost Day of the Gods pet, uh, pedestal thing which that's gonna get you to 300 pretty easy 
so that's greatly going to reduce the recovery rate otherwise you're gonna have to pump the light magic for a fair bit of time or get a spear of darkness but it, eventually um, you're, you're gonna be able to get this as fast as daggers and even get a bonus uh, spear bonus from a uh, dragon for example that gives uh, like 10 to 20 fire damage I believe and there's a specific artifact which Poseidon which I don't think is all that useful but it is a plus 15 so I guess that's kinda nice but I think you would really want uh, something like of the dragon or something that, uh, some other high damage boosting item once you get uh, minimum recovery or you can get a vampiric or darkness because vampiric is still a pretty good bonus especially for the damage that you can be doing which is going to heal your character pretty fast so definitely a lot of options in terms of uh, what enchantments that you would want uh, in terms of damage this is going to be very nice because it gives a bonus to damage per skill point so if you have a character that just casts light magic you can pump that for, for heroism or spirit magic you can pump your damage and uh, from that one caster and then put all your points into spear and get your damage pretty high uh, some compensation for no arms master uh, and it's the re recovery rate is manageable it's definitely within the realm of possibility to get uh, to the minimum recovery in the mid game so definitely uh, as good as you're going to get in terms of damage uh, halberds are going to do uh, a good amount of damage the plus 10 one uh, I put uh, the spear at A tier good damage dealing weapon obviously uh, all the weapons are going to be inferior to light and dark magic or dark magic in particular in terms of damage but if you're going melee then the damage isn't going to be all that bad so A tier weapon skill for any non spellcaster this uh, this would be the weapon I would recommend on the gray face patch you can dual wield a spear and sword uh, I really wouldn't recommend getting sword past eight uh, and you know you can get a fair a little bit of damage boost from that uh, and the recovery penalty is isn't gonna be uh, that noticeable so it, it's a little bit better to go with spear and sword there but for the unpatched uh, I would stick with the two-hander obviously so a tier weapon up next we have the bow which can be learned by every class archers start with the skill it can be learned at berserkers fury or duelist edge guilds uh, you can get expert in castle iron fist or white cap and master in Kriegspire, but only after completing the battle mage promotion quest every skill point gives a bonus to attack bonus uh, bonus to hit chance at expert it, every skill point reduces recovery rate at master it allows you to fire two arrows on every attack bows are obviously very 
uh, easy to get and everyone can use them early on they're pretty nice because they can easily one shot or two shot a lot of monsters obviously they're very safe you can kite anything if you wanted to the problem is is that they're really slow they have 100 recovery rate and while it is possible to get bows to be as fast as blasters um, uh, that's not really very realistic in a regular run because you would have to pump a lot of points in the bow pump some light magic uh, it's not really very attainable uh, you, you're gonna be doing a lot more damage from spells or even melee I wouldn't really recommend using bows as your pr primary form of damage Um, uh, it is pretty good early on again and it's obviously nice to just be able to whittle down monsters from a distance but it's gonna take a while if they have a lot of HP if they're ranged then I, it's not particularly all that good uh, there are two artifacts I believe there's Percival which is a swift bow that's pretty nice which is going to reduce the recovery rate by 20 and there's also Artemis which is a plus 20 bow considering that there's not m much ways to get damage bonuses plus 20 is actually pretty good Uh, it can be a pretty de decent damage dealer if you have put in a lot of investment, which again is not very realistic. It's a pretty decent weapon early on. Obviously every class can learn it. Obviously you should learn it if, if you can, obviously, because it's pretty easy to get. So for me it's B tier, pretty good but I wouldn't rely on this to do damage. Up next we have the mace, which can be learned by every class except for sorcerers. Clerics automatically start with the skill. It can be learned at Duelist's Edge and you can get expert mace in Mire of the Damned or Whitecap and Master in Blackshire. Every skill point gives a bonus to attack. Uh, at Expert it gives a bonus to damage and Master it gives a chance to stun equal to skill. Stun uh, as I've talked about before is kind of useless in fact I think it's actually worse to get stun than than to like not get it because it knocks uh, enemies back so that's very inconvenient so it's gonna make hitting a lot more inconvenient so I would not recommend getting stun and it's basically useless it doesn't really do anything uh, mace is pretty good simply because it gives uh, attack bonus or damage bonus every skill point that you put in mace is going to give you bonus damage so if you pump mace then uh, you can get some pretty decent damage not going to be as good as the spear simply because there are the maces don't do as much damage however there is a particular artifact Ares which gives plus which is a uh, 30 fire damage so that's actually very powerful I think that might be the highest damage uh, in the game for a weapon at least for a bonus 
So that's actually pretty nice. The recovery rate is reasonable. It's 80. So it's the same as spear. So haste plus any uh, item of darkness and you're going to be hitting as fast as a dagger. Um, if, if you don't have uh, one of darkness or swift then pump white magic get that pretty high and also look for uh, items of recovery I should mention uh, which lower AC by uh, lower recovery rate by 10% that's going to get you to the lower recovery faster Um, yeah, it's a pretty good damage dealing uh, weapon. It's not as good as spears. You also don't get the AC bonus from spears. Uh, obviously, it's inferior. I would put it at B tier. Obviously, if you're playing with a um, cleric you have to use them there's not really any other option other than staff which is worthless um, as far as maces like I said uh, if you get Ares that would be very nice uh, the other uh, mace Thor is not very good in fact it's actually kind of terrible because it does knock back um, Uh, if you don't have that, then uh, again, Swift or uh, Darkness is going to be pretty nice uh, to get lower recovery. Vampiric, pretty good. Maybe ones of the Dragon, like I said, with Spear or other damage boosting, like uh, uh, Lightning one, 6 to 15, whatever, but. Yeah, it's a pretty decent uh, damage dealer, but it's obviously inferior to uh, other weapons. Uh, it's not going to be as good in terms of damage as daggers early on, and it, while it may uh, eventually do more damage if you get the right uh, bonuses, it's not going to be all that much better. I'd put it uh, plus, you know, there's the chance to trip do triple damage, which they get, but they do get the bonus to damage per skill, so it is going to be uh, on par or close to uh, a spear, but simply because it requires more investment to get there. Uh, I would obviously recommend getting the spear, so I'd put this at B tier. Uh, pretty good, but uh, obviously uh, the spear is better. And finally for weapons, we have the blaster. Which technically I maybe shouldn't rank because it's technically required to kill the reactor, so it's kind of necessary. But uh, well, technically, you know, you can use elemental arrows to technically kill the reactor. But uh, obviously, you learn this skill uh, in the control center. You cannot learn it anywhere else. Uh, you can you get expert in usurpical or eel infested waters and master in paradise valley and every skill point gives a bonus to hit chance at expert it's doubled and tripled so at master you're getting three plus three per point of skill uh, the hit chance isn't very relevant uh, the blasters have the fastest recovery rate. The, their base recovery is 30, and that can be lowered all the way down to... Well, I think it's 
five, although maybe unpatched at zero, like you can actually get to no recovery at all. Uh, if you have haste, so all you need for this to get as fast recovery as possible is to have not a dog shit speed and haste, and you're hitting uh, blasters instantly. Uh, can kill basically any monster within a few seconds, kill tire hordes within a very short period of time. Obviously, uh, you're not getting any damage, but it, you don't really need it because it's shooting so fast. Obviously, S tier skill, very overpowered. Uh, it doesn't matter what party that you're playing, you get blaster and they're, you're gonna be going down, shooting down monsters uh, just as fast really nice obviously very OP not much more to say um, yeah so that's gonna do it for the skills for weapons okay um, also uh, every class can use blaster obviously um, so now we have the magic skills, which I'm not going to be going over into too great detail because I already went through this, the spell guide. I'm just going to be talking about the spell schools as a whole. First we have fire magic, which uh, can be learned obviously. It's an elemental spell uh, school, so it, uh, archers, sorcerers, and druids can learn it. Sorcerers start with the fire magic skill. Uh, you can learn it in the Guild of Elements or the Guild of Fire. Um, Expert can be learned in Usurpical and Freehaven. And Master can be learned in Mist. Like I said in Spells Guide, uh, Fire Blast is a very powerful damage spell. Uh, made a little bit irrelevant by dark magic obviously with shrap metal but if you have Morgan which is the artifact that gives bonus to uh, elemental schools uh, and a fire magic uh, ring or amulet it's going to give a nice bonus to damage for fire very quickly plus the AOE spells are going to be doing a fair amount of damage as well simply for the amount of access to damage spells even though still not as good as air or water or light or dark obviously uh, I'd still put fire magic at A tier uh, pretty good uh, definitely best option if you don't have light or dark magic and even if you do it's still a pretty good option simply for uh, the access to uh, certain damage spells and you also have haste which again uh, pretty convenient to have and if you have blasters then you may not even need uh, really light magic at all because blaster is going to carry you mostly um, as long as your speed isn't crap so a tier skill uh, up next we have air magic which is another elemental spell uh, school can be learned by archers Sorcerers and Druids, Archers automatically learn it, uh, have it at the start. Uh, you can get it at the Guild of Elements or the Guild of Air. You can get uh, Expert in Usurpagal and Freehaven and Master at Mist uh, with the Archmage promotion, meaning that you can get, four, you only need four points and you can get Master Air. Obviously, air magic is very OP. Uh, 
the fact that you can get fly and jump make it obviously uh, S tier automatically. Plus, you know, you have good damage spells like Sparks and Starburst. The fact that you can get Air Magic Master immediately also makes it very nice for being able to get da good damage early. Uh, you, you get um, uh, Morgan plus an air item. Uh, your damage output from Sparks and Starburst is going to be really good. S tier skill. Up next we have Water Magic, which uh, again is another elemental skill that which can be learned by archers, sorcerers, and druids. Uh, you can get Water Magic in the Guild of Elements or the Guild of Water. Expert can be learned in Usurpagal or Freehaven and Master in Mist. Water is S tier obviously because of uh, Town Portal and Lloyd's Beacon. Obviously being able to teleport back and forth through dungeons and being able to teleport uh, at certain wells, like the one Creek Spire or the one uh, the Day of the Gods pedestal in uh, New, New World Computing, uh, you don't need any healing with water magic. If you have any sorcerer or anyone that can cast water, you want to get Master Water Magic as soon as possible, so you can have access to Master Town Portal Lloyd's Beacon, and also the Enchant item is still pretty good as well as tier skill. Next we have Earth Magic, another elemental school. Can be learned by archers, uh, druids, and sorcerers. Is automatically learned with druids. Can be learned in the Guild of Elements or the Guild of Earth, which is in Silver Cove. Or Freehaven. Uh, Expert can be learned in New Sorbigal or Freehaven and Master Silver Cove. I don't think Earth is very good. There's not really any spells that are really worth it, aside maybe from Stone to Flesh, which it's you're not really going to need very much. Stone Skin, not very relevant if you have. Light magic already. There's not really anything that you really need. The damage is okay with like rock blast, but or mass distortion, but uh, it's not really as good as fire in terms of having a alternative to dark magic for damage. So I'd put it at C tier. It's not really all that good, in my opinion. Okay, on to the self schools. Uh, first, we have spirit magic, which can be learned by paladins, druids, and clerics. Paladins automatically learn it. Can be learned in the guild of self or the guild of spirit. Uh, at, you can learn expert. Spirit in New Serpagola Freehaven and Master in Castle Ironfest after you get the High Priest promotion, which means that you can learn Master Spirit uh, at four skill points. Um, spirit magic isn't very good if you have light magic. Uh, if you don't, then it's very nice because you just pump spirit to get heroism and bless every point in spirit magic gives you a bonus to damage effectively for your whole party and hit chance um, with and with the egrain artifact plus a spirit uh, item it's going to be boosted even more maybe on average two damage for skill points, so that's pretty good, but if you have light magic, it's not very relevant. 
I guess you have shared life, which is an okay healing spell. Not really all that good. I guess remove curse is pretty nice too, because you have those mass curse harpies, which are kind of annoying, but kind of a mediocre school, but really depends on what party you have. So I'm putting spirit magic at B tier. And next we have mind magic, which it can be learned by paladins, druids, and clerics. It can be learned in the. I uh, can. Uh, yeah, uh, it can be learned in the Guild of Self or Guild of Mind. Uh, you can get expert in New Serbagol or Freehaven and master in Silver Cove. Mind magic is worth it simply for telekinesis. Like I said in the spells guide. Telekinesis is very good, uh, can make you click on things more quickly, can, uh, can let you enter dungeons or other areas um, without having to touch, go near monsters, you can open chests without having to disarm them. Um, very nice spell. Uh, basically everything else is pretty worthless. In fact, if it wants for telekinesis, this would be a completely worthless skill. Uh, you don't really need to put any points into mind. In fact, just get the skill so you can get telekinesis. And telekinesis is not improved in any way by uh, pumping anything, any skill points into it. So it's A tier simply for telekinesis, but everything else is kind of worthless. So it's an A tier skill for me. Up next we have body magic, which can be learned by paladins, druids, or clerics. Clerics automatically learn it. It can be learned in the Guild of Self or Body. You get expert at New Serpagol of Freehaven and master in Silver Cove. Body is again pretty mediocre, like spirit. It very depends on your party composition. You obviously have the healing spells, which are kind of mediocre, uh, the cure spells, which you don't really need if you have Town Portal, you have speed and power which if you have light magic aren't necessary the cure weakness is kind of nice simply because it makes when you when the haste wears off and your party's weak it's nice to have that i guess but there are, obviously it's inferior to other skills uh, if you have them then you don't have much use for body magic so i'd put it at b tier along with spirit. Um, if you have a grain and the a body, a body uh, boosting item, maybe this, the heals are a little bit better. Still not very good. Much better to just teleport into a town. Uh, again, B tier skill. Uh, next we have light magic, which uh, is not on the page, but uh, yeah, it's still here. It's just not. Uh, it's run off the page for some reason. Which is kind of funny. Um, obviously, light magic is S tier. Don't need to explain that again. For buffs like Day of the Gods and Hour of Power, uh, for any melee party, every point you're putting in light magic plus if you have Guinevere the light and dark boosting item plus a light magic item uh, that is boosting your stats very nicely uh, obviously boosting your damage and your hit chance armor class luck so much bonus that you're getting for putting points into light magic uh, if 
you're going to any late melee party, even if you're not, it's going to buff your party very much. S tier skill. And finally, we have, uh, by the way, uh, light magic um, can only be learned in the Guild of Light in Silver Cove and Blackshire. You can get uh, expert in Silver Cove and Creek Spire and master in the eel infested waters you can only get master light if you have a reputation that is saintly which is kind of annoying uh, i would recommend doing uh, before like uh, basically doing the slicker silver tongue quest if the superior temple ba uh, which will give you a shitload of reputation and then immediately getting light master so that you can get uh, a light uh, for everyone that can use it uh, which you only need the four points after you get expert um, and then uh, so and then you know you can probably have Stanley pretty easily at that point um, but yeah, obviously, light is going to be pretty nice to have, so S tier skill. Finally, we have, uh, by the way, uh, also only sorcerers and uh, clerics can use the light skill. Finally, we have dark magic which again can only be learned by sorcerers and clerics you can only get it from the guild of dark in frozen islands or blackshire expert can be learned in frozen islands slash whitecap or blackshire and master can be learned in paradise valley but you need a re notorious reputation which is pretty easy to get all you need to do is armaken in an area with peasants and you have notorious right there uh, dark magic is obviously very OP shrap metal best damage I put in the game again get Guinevere plus a dark item you're gonna be doing a shitload of damage with a shrap metal uh, just a ton of damage one shot anything plus you know you have arm again obviously very great way to clear uh, outdoor areas not much to say obviously s tier for any spellcaster just pump this skill as much as possible and you're going to be doing a shit ton of damage so that's going to do it for the magic skills so uh, we have the armor skills next First we have shield, which cannot be learned by archers, and sorcerers can be learned by every other class. Uh, you can learn it in the Berserker's Fury or Duelist Edge at Expert. You can learn it in Castle Iron Fist. Uh, you can get Expert at Castle Iron Fist or Freehaven and Master in the Blackshire. Uh, every skill point is giving you a bonus to armor class. Uh, Expert is giving you two, and Master is three, so it's an effective way to pump AC for shield. Uh, one of the problems I have with shield is the recovery rate. Uh, it gives a 10 penalty, which I believe in the vanilla... Uh, game uh, cannot be removed although I could be mistaken um, maybe it's uh, because uh, obviously in the gray face patch um, it fixes this so that uh, at master the recovery penalty is removed I believe in the base game this is not the case and you just have a 10 penalty which isn't as bad as obviously dual wielding 
So if you're not dual, if you can't really dual wield, then this is pretty okay. Uh, if you can get a good light magic and a recovery item, uh, then the shield penalty is not going to be all that bad. And obviously, you know, being able to just pump a lot of armor class uh, at master, that's going to be giving you 30. Uh, plus, you know, having a shield uh, is basically for, especially for cleric or druid, it's basically just uh, a slot that you can put a, a buff or bonus to. Um, uh, you can get. Uh, shields which give like plus 20 or so AC or so yeah I think it's like 20 at most or around that ballpark uh, and that enchantment can give you something like I believe plus 5 level I think you can get that on shield just gonna give you a, a ton of uh, hit points and spell points or you can get something that regenerates or you can get something that just gives like 20 spell points or hit points or even just like 20 armor class and really get a lot of uh, armor class in addition to the 30 that you'd be getting at master so because of the recovery penalty I would put it at B tier uh, but if you're playing the base game you don't really have much else for the second hand, so you might as well put it if you can get the recovery low enough. So B tier skill, and then we have the weapons. Uh, I'm just gonna be going over them together. Um, leather can be learned by any class. Uh, knights automatically start with leather. Uh, can be learned in the Smuggler's Guild, Protection Services, Blades End, or Buccaneer's Lair. Expert can be learned in Castle Iron Fist and Mist. Master can be learned at the f at White Cap. Um, obviously, a, a tier uh, getting bonus to armor class is very nice uh, you get up to 24 with leather that's uh, uh, one of the problems is that you do have to get the uh, recovery down so forgot to mention every skill point is at armor class at expert the recovery penalty is reduced at master it's eliminated I believe uh, I can't remember let me, uh, let me just look real quick. Uh, I believe the recovery for leather is... Yeah, it's 10, and then expert's 5, and 0. It's removed completely. So, uh, you really don't want... To, uh, it's not too bad, uh, but obviously... Um, you should only really be putting this on the sorcerer and druid since uh, the other classes can get better. It doesn't require a promotion, but uh, I'd be putting it at A tier. Uh, put the 10 points uh, for the AC, which is pretty good. At master, that's going to be uh, 34, plus, you know, whatever enchantment that the leather has. I don't think there's any leather that leather artifact I'm pretty sure there isn't but you can still get one that gives bonuses again to gives you like 20 something AC or spell points hit points regeneration level there's definitely a lot of buffs that you can put plus with sorcerers and druids you don't even need to bother with pumping it at all because of the that you're not really going to be worrying about recovery anyway so A tier uh, again only sorcerers sorcerers and druids this is the highest that they can get and I think I mentioned right 
for shield. Uh, yeah, sorcerers and archers can learn it, but uh, yeah, this is the best for sorcerers and druids. Um, up next we have chain, which can be learned only. Well, it can't be learned by sorcerers or druids. Um, it can be learned in the Berserker's Fury and Duelist Edge. At ex you can get expert in Castle Iron Fist and Bootleg Bay. You can get master in uh, Mire of the Damned, but only after doing the Crusader promotion. Again, same thing with leather. It's nice to get the armor class and uh, whatever bonuses you get from chain from the item that you have uh, the base recovery is 20 at normal you're giving one point per ar uh, armor class per skill point at expert the recovery penalty is reduced to 10 at master it's eliminated completely so again uh, you, you want this just for uh, archers and uh, archers and clerics again the armor class penalty is a lot worse so definitely want to pump that definitely want to get the promotion um, but uh, it's, again same reasons you definitely want uh, that bonus from the chainmail, so I think it's worth it just to get the 50 for, uh, but not necessarily important. But obviously, getting the skill is nice, especially for clerics. So I'd put chainmail at A tier, just like leather. Uh, there is there are two artifacts, I believe, or is there one? I think there's one. Oh, there's two. Okay. Uh, so you get Apollo, which gives a penalty to endurance, so you lose endurance uh, hit points and a bonus to luck and 22 resistances, which is pretty good. Um, and then. Um, uh, you have Apollo, uh, Apollo and then you have Galahad which has a pretty decent AC as well uh, it gives bonus to hit points and fire electrical and poison resistances which is kinda nice so okay artifacts not nothing white right home about but still pretty good so a tier skill Finally, we have plate, which can only be learned by knights and paladins. You can learn the skill in Castle Iron Fist and Silver Cove. You can learn. You can get to expert in Castle Iron Fist and Freehaven and master in Freehaven, but only after doing the hero promotion, which is kind of a pain. Uh, you have to kill the dragon. And you also have to actually fly up to above Osric Temper because so if you don't have any access to fly getting or jump that's going to be annoying to get to or t TK um, but obviously plate is definitely going to give you a lot of AC up to 54 so you would want this on knights it's worth the 10 skill points um, but um, the recovery penalty up before master is kinda rough so again uh, it's giving one skill to armor class every skill point is giving a bonus to armor class at expert the starts out at 30 recovery penalty and then at expert it's reduced to 15 and then master it's completely eliminated so, uh, at the period of time before you get the sh uh, master plate and the hero promotion, if you have plate, it's going to be really slow. 
so that's kind of that kind of sucks but after you get plate master it's going to be the ac is going to be really nice plus again you know you have the bonuses that you can get from say armor class or well paladins and knights it doesn't matter about spell points but you know hit points or level plus five level one get a generation one of hit points uh, some or even to like resistances or um, there is uh, I think two plates uh, you have Pelinor which uh, gives I think it reduces hit recovery but I think it's like the item where it's like a minus 10% which is still kinda nice uh, it gives endurance as well and regenerates hit points kinda nice not bad and then Zeus which is 64 AC I think it's the best AC bonus in the game uh, 50 hit points, spell points not very relevant, on even f uh, I guess paladins is kind of nice, and then 50 luck, uh, minus 50 intellect which is irrelevant for paladins and knights, so pretty good artifacts there. I put uh, plate at A tier just like the other armor, uh, obviously nice skill to have if but you obviously want to get this to master and then once you get master it's going to be pretty good so A tier skill so that's going to do it for the armor okay finally we have the miscellaneous skills starting off we have identify item which can be learned by any class in the game you can learn it in Buccaneers and Lair, Smuggler's Guild, or Protection Services. Expert can be learned in Usurpical or Castle Iron Fist, and Master at Freehaven, which requires a minimum intellect of 30 to learn to master. And what this does is that it allows you to in identify any item in uh, or it'll identify an item based on your chant uh, your power of the skill uh, at expert the effect is tripled and master I mean that expert is doubled and uh, master it's tripled master basically you can identify any item uh, including artifacts um, there is an NPC in the game uh, called the scholar that automatically identifies items for your entire party so if you have that NPC it's identify is it necessary if you want an uh, NPC for so, some other NPC then uh, ID item is definitely pretty good being able to just um, because there are a lot of since this game is a lot of loot is RNG based uh, you want to know what items that are good um, obviously you can go to a store but that's very inconvenient so I think ID item is A tier uh, the, uh, it's nice to have on someone just for the utility of it although uh, obviously there are ways that you can just go by without it and obviously you can go without identifying items but I prefer I think it it's nice to know what items especially if you get like say an item of darkness uh, which you would have no way of being able to tell if it was if you got a swift item I would definitely or you know maybe getting an artifact or something so I, I'd put it at or something that like gives bonuses to magic I think it's uh, has uses so I put it at A tier um, up next we have merchant which is a skill that can be learned by anyone you can learn it in the Buccaneers layer or protection services 
uh, Expert can be learned in Free Haven or Meyer of the Damned, and Master can be learned in Silver Cove, but you need a minimum per personality of 30. And what this does is it reduces uh, costs in anything, whether it be shops or you know buying items, selling items. Uh, it reduces costs in training or taverns, although that doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, it basically just reduces costs of everything. Um, very nice spell. Money is very important, uh, especially early on. Uh, you know, getting spells, being able to train, getting skills to master, etc. Later on, it's not as important because you have so much money, but you definitely want this on your entire party at least at one. So I put this at S tier simply for that. Definitely something you want on your party. Uh, up next, we have Repair Item, which can be learned by any class. Uh, you can learn it in Berserker's Fury or Blade's End. You can get Expert at Mist or Silver Cove and Master in Whitecap with a minimum of 30 accuracy. Um, there are two NPCs, or yeah, there are three different NPCs that repair items. One for weapons, one for armor, and one for magical items. Obviously, you can't get all three at once. Um, so, if you want complete uh, access to repair then you have to get repair item skill um, having repair is kind of important because uh, there are a lot of monsters especially at high level that just break your shit all the time and having to go to a shop to repair them is going to be really annoying so definitely want someone to have repair arguably even uh, having repair on everyone simply for the convenience but uh, you could also get NPCs depending on what your party composition is you might be able to get by with like an armor if you're doing a spellcaster party you might be able to get out by with an armor and a uh, alchemist that way you don't have to like because the weapons don't really matter um, so there's definitely a case for that so I'd put it at A tier very useful uh, especially for melee parties having shit break all the time is gonna really hurt your damage like you, you want to be able to just repair that immediately uh, so I put it at A tier along with ID item, although I'd say it's better than identify item, but uh, I'm keeping uh, ID item at A tier still, um, so yeah, but yeah, uh, and again, like with ID item, the skill determines how much it can repair what items it can repair at expert this effect is doubled and master triple basically at master it can repair any item like identify item so uh, if, assuming you don't have an alchemist or smith or armor then you want to get this to seven pretty s as soon as possible So, very good skill. A tier. And next we have bodybuilding, which can be learned by any class in the game. You can learn it in Duelist's Edge. You can get Expert in New Serbical or Castle Iron Fist. Master at Freehaven, but you need a minimum 
endurance of 30 and it basically gives a bonus to your hit points based on the character uh, the class the base class of the character so four hit points for knights uh, at expert it's doubled and then tripled so at master it would be plus 12 um, uh, not including the promotions obviously uh, bodybuilding is very important to have on all your characters because hit points is especially for spellcasters you're not going to have very much so having that nice boost especially since it's so easy to get can't really go wrong with having more hit points because monsters in this game can do a lot of damage you can go back to the heal but it's obviously more convenient to stay longer so I put bodybuilding at S tier next we have meditation which can be learned by every class except for knights because I obviously they don't have spell points you can learn it in the self guilds body mind spirit expert can be learned in new cervical or silver cove and master can be learned in mist with but requires a minimum personality of 30 and it's just like bodybuilding except for spell points um, so take the base class of their spell points so four for instance for sorcerers and then at expert and it's giving like one skill point per of uh, what one four spell points per skill point and then expert it's doubled and then tripled so at master it's 12 spell points for base sorcerer obviously having boosting your spell points is very nice you're gonna be using a lot of casting in this game casting town portal casting dark spells like shrap metal cost less spell points having meditation is gonna be really good I would recommend getting this to master uh, at least for the spell point bonus very nice s skill S tier for get it for any uh, if you have any spellcaster basically up next we have perception which uh, can be learned by any class you can learn it in the Buccaneers Lair, Smugglers Guild, or Protection Services Expert can be learned in New Sorpagal or Bootleg Bay and Master can be learned in Meyer the Dan but it requires a minimum luck of 30 and what this it says that uh, it allows your character to notice treasures um, it's kind of weird how this skill I'm not really sure how it completely works I've tried this many times basically what it what it basically does is first of all it gives you a bonus I mean it, it uh, allows you to dodge traps which is completely pointless because it only works on one character so if you want to avoid taking damage from your whole party uh, you have to get it on all characters and if you have disarm trap then you get that so it's a seven for instance you can disarm every trap as opposed to perception which same skill points except you have to put it on your whole party to not take any damage so why would you put uh, points into a skill just to have one character resist damage when you can get another skill that will remove damage for the entire party kinda pointless also um, it allows you to like get scrolls from like skull piles unless you're doing like some challenge run or you're, you're not going to any stores that's kind of worthless scrolls don't really matter all that much there's really not anything that this spell really does um, that's good at all it, um, except for the fact that you need the spell to beat the game 
because a dungeon in Superior Temple of Ba requires that you have four perception skill so that you can uh, click on the doors because otherwise you click on the doors and they hurt your party and they won't open so you have to get perception to four so that you can open the, the doors to complete the dungeon unless you use some glitches to glitch the items or something but um, it says at uh, expert that it's master the effect is tripled um, I think maybe to uh, click on certain skull piles and avoid traps uh, but again this spells basically worthless except for the fact that you specifically have to get that skill to uh, click on the doors so basically just get this you have to get this skill on one party member and have them put get it to four so that you can open the doors but it's basically useless besides that so uh, this one's kind of hard to rank because it's necessary, but the actual skill itself is kind of useless. So it's like S tier in the sense that you have to, you know, you need it to beat the game, but it's RP tier for basically everything else for, aside from having that one purpose. So, uh, again, going from, uh, taking from Day of Yorn. Uh, putting this at, uh, at X tier, uh, it's completely useless on one end, but for the, for that one specific purpose to complete the, the dungeon necessary to advance the main quest line, uh, it's obviously necessary and required, but completely worthless. Otherwise, the, the other effects, like avoiding traps and getting stuff from skull piles completely useless uh, don't get the spell other than I mean, don't get this skill other than to uh, uh, clear the dungeon in Ba and only get it to four skill points on a single character otherwise don't don't use it other than for RP reasons <sighs> So yeah, uh, X tier for perception. Up next we have diplomacy, which can be learned by every class. Uh, you can learn it in Buccaneer's Lair, Smuggler's Guild, or Protection Services. Uh, you can get expert in Castle Iron Fist or Freehaven, and master at the Frozen Highlands. Oh, and by the way, you need uh, a thirty luck for. Uh, master Perception. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, diplomacy, what it does is it re reduces the the negative reputation that you get from begging, bribing, or threatening NPCs. Um, and then at the effect is doubled at ma expert and then tripled at master. This spell is totally worthless. Uh, it's very easy to, the reputation doesn't matter at all. You can get a uh, respectable reputation just from donating to a temple. Like that shit doesn't matter at all. I guess you can make an argument that you want to get light magic, but then again, again, I would just wait and get do the superior temple quest that you can get saintly and even then the reputation doesn't really matter plus there are plenty of NPCs in the game that you can get from houses so that you don't even have to recruit NPCs from the map anyway so this, this skill is totally worthless there's no reason to get this this is a complete RP tier spell don't take it unless you're role-playing completely useless otherwise there's no benefit to having this at all um, uh, I, I, 
the, the next we have thievery, but this isn't a real skill because it's uh, it's only present in from the save game editor. It doesn't do anything. I think when you try uh, when I tried to control it, just did the quick spell. Interestingly enough, but yeah, uh, not really a disregard this. Uh, next we have disarm trap, which again can be learned by every class in the game. You can learn it in Buccaneer's Lair, Smuggler's Guild, or Protection Services. You can get Expert in Castle Iron Fist or Free Haven. And you can get Master in Whitecap, Frozen Islands, uh, with a minimum accuracy of 30. And what this does is it allows you to open chests without triggering the traps and hurting your party members. Uh, the effect is doubled at Expert and then tripled at Master. I think with master disarm and maybe like eight or nine you can disarm any trap. Um, uh, disarm trap is pretty good. Uh, being able to not take damage is nice. Um, uh, traps in this game do a lot of damage. Can do a lot of damage later on. It doesn't matter as much. Uh, there are ways to circumvent this, obviously, with telekinesis, uh, but it still uh, can have a lot of uses. Um, there are NPCs that give bonuses to disarm, uh, but they're not going to give you a 100%. Um, and they're not going to completely get uh, be able to for you to disarm everything, so it's nice to avoid taking damage and especially early on, but it doesn't have much use later on in the game, especially when you have shit like fly or telekinesis or even teleporting. You can avoid uh, get taking damage from chests, so I put this at B tier. Pretty good, but uh, not exactly necessary. And finally we have learning, which can be learned by any class. Uh, you can learn it in the elemental guilds, so air, earth, water, fire. Uh, you can get expert learning in usurpical or castle iron fist and master in silver cove, but you need a minimum intellect of 30. So what this does is um, it gives bonus to experience to your uh, character. Every point in skill is a percent of whatever experience that you got. That sh I believe, that, yeah, it's only from killing monsters, so it doesn't include quests, experience, and it has a starting bonus at 9 and then plus 1 per point of skill. Um, at Expert this is doubled, at, tr at Master this is tripled. So uh, if you have Master rank uh, at 7, you're getting a plus 30% bonus to experience for every monster that you're killing. Um, learning is kind of interesting in that uh, the experience bonus that you get uh, is not really all that good usually but because like you first you have to think of it like if you're getting to master then you have to put in um, s seven points, so like whatever, 27 skill points. And then how many levels are you going to get? Like you would have to get like two, like later, like in later th levels, maybe two or three levels just to make up for that experience uh, level uh, skill points. And early on, it's it's not going to give that much of a bonus to levels, but obviously um, 
first of all, it's it's obviously a bonus to just get it at one, just learn the skill and automatically get extra experience. But also, it's a very easy to farm experience. Like again, like I've said, you can kill all the monsters. You can kill a shitload of energy drakes by farming the well in Creekspire, or you can just Armageddon areas in towns and get a shitload of experience that way. So the learning bonus when you of killing all those monsters is definitely going to make some difference. So it's a good uh, skill to have. It's not not completely necessary, but it's definitely going to help and uh, help uh, getting levels and it's at least worth it to get uh, to learn this learn the skill on your entire party so I put learning at a tier for the uh, for the uh, for the bonuses uh, to levels that you can get although uh, diminishing returns at uh, at higher uh, skill points uh, you don't want to just be pumping this maybe to master but I don't think it's much use beyond that anyway that's gonna do it for the skills guide for my magic six uh, I'm gonna be doing the I'm gonna be doing the skills guide for seven and eight pretty soon after this gonna be a lip bit more to talk about, but this one took a fair amount more time than I thought it was going to, so we'll see uh, how that's going to go. See all of you guys later.